Hi again, everybody. It's Kevin Canessa coming to you from the newsroom of The Observer and TheObserver.com on this, the 11th day of July in the year 2022. Sure hope you're enjoying your Monday, no matter where it is you are in the country. Beautiful day here in the Northeast, and I hope it's the same no matter where you are. And as always, I thank you for welcoming me into your homes in um, weekly on a weekly basis, as you do every week. Today is uh, uh, I'm really stuttering today. I apologize. You got a lot going on in this week's edition of the Observer, and as you can see in the right hand side of your screen. The headline is, Will This Ever End? And there's an aerial photo of the Keegan landfill. Looks so pretty, doesn't it? Well, the NJSEA recently gave a presentation and uh, spoke about the Keegan landfill to the Kearney Town Council. We've got a recap of what's going on. Uh, it, It appears that it may be another two years at most before the impermeable cap is installed and done. Uh, so the the town and the NJSEA are on the same page. It doesn't seem as if the mayor or members of the council are alarmed by the pace that it's taking to get to this point. But if you've been in, if you were in the area the last couple of weekends, uh, you know I live pretty close to the Keegan landfill, and it stunk on one of those uh, weekend days this past weekend. I think it was Saturday. Uh, so much so that I closed my window. Now, I can't say with 100% certainty that it was coming from the Keegan landfill. It could have been from down next somewhere. There's a lot of fishing and things going down there. But it sure smelled like the hydrogen sulfide of the past. But by, by no means was it as bad as it was in 2018 and 2019. But it's still around a little bit, I think. And it's taking a while, and it may be two more years before it's done. There are some skeptics on the council, including Carol Jean Doyle, who still says she won't believe it's done until it's done, and she won't believe it's got new things, the uh, passive recreation and all the other things they're supposed to build on the property once it's all said and done. And you can understand that because there have been a lot of uh, promises broken over the years, whether it was with the New Jersey Meadowlands Commission or with the NJSEA. But so far, it looks like it's on progress to finish in a year and a half to two years with the impermeable cap and all that sort of stuff. So read the story. It starts on page one, and you'll get a better sense of what's going on right now with the landfill. I'm glad we were able to get an update on what's happening over there. On the bottom of the front page is uh, the story about Mayor Michael Melham being sworn in for his second term, as was Naomi DePena and Tom Graziano for counsel. Dick Cody, the former governor of the state of New Jersey, state senator now, swore in Melham and uh, joked around about him swearing in a mayor who wasn't a Democrat. Melham is a registered independent, not an unaffiliated voter, not a Republican, not a Democrat, a registered independent. There is an independent independence party in the state of New Jersey, which Melham is a member thereof. And it was a nice ceremony with the three people being sworn in, Melham, DePena, and Graziano. Uh, Naomi DePena took the entire oath in Spanish, and it was delivered to her by her dad, who was a Protestant minister. So very nice ceremony there. It was good to have uh, see Dick Cody there as well. And the mayor and his two council running mates are off to term number two. We have a full recap of it in this week's edition of The Observer. A couple of local things going on in Kearney. First of all, the PBA, the FMBA, and CS11 made a major donation of food to the Kearney wide, Townwide Food Bank last week. And we have a photo of that, plus some information about what the PBA did and what the FMBA and CS11 together, the three town unions, workers' unions, getting together and making a substantial donation. I had a chance to speak with Mina and Claudius, who is the new president of the PBA. We're supposed to get together this week, and he's going to tell me all about his plans as the newly elected president of the PBA. And he did already say you can expect to see the PBA in a more visible role in the coming months around the town of Kearney, interacting with the people, getting to know people more too. So looks like the PBA is in good hands, and the FMBA and CS11 always are as well. 
Watco is putting on a Disney sing-along. It is Saturday, July the 16th, this Saturday. At the VFW, it takes place outside, the $10 suggested donation. And the words to all of the great Disney songs that they will sing will be up on a big, big, big screen so you can sing along with some of your favorites. Linda Deesa sent over the uh, a couple of songs, and one of them was Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and I don't know if I even said that right, but it was so long that it couldn't fit in the paper. It kept trying to um, hyphenate the word, but it wouldn't hyphenate because it was so long, so I had to pull that out, but that will be one of the songs that you can sing along, and who doesn't like to sing to Disney songs? Come on, you know you do, even if you won't admit it. In Harrison, taxes are staying stable once again. It's pretty remarkable when you think about it. We live in a major metropolis, one of the biggest metropolises in the world. And we've got towns like North Arlington, like Kearney, and now Harrison, who are uh, claiming a 0% tax increase on the municipal side. I think, with all due respect to the other towns, it's a greater feat for what Harrison has done when you consider that the population grew exponentially. I think it went from 14,000 10 years ago to 19,000 plus in 2020. And with that explosion of population has come additional police officers, additional firefighters, more EMTs, other employees. And yet, Mayor Fife and the town council have been able to keep the municipal bill sturdy for the past couple of years that's a remarkable feat to pull off when you consider the growth and the expansion of the town local just in in terms of human resources that they've been able to keep the taxes flat is remarkable you're probably not going to see a decline in the tax rate but that they've been able to keep it flat is remarkable so congratulations to mayor fife and to the harrison town council for that And if you're a resident of Harrison, it's good news. Now, it doesn't mean if you live in Harrison, you won't see a tax increase because what we don't know is what the tax rate will be from the county or the school. So bottom line, though, is if you're going to see an increase, it won't because of anything that the mayor or the town council did. They kept it flat. The council chambers in the town of Kearney is being renovated, and we have a photograph of that. Uh, the police blotter had to split up this week because there were some really interesting en- um, en- en- entries this week. And I apologize that for some reason I can't talk tonight. I don't know what's going on. Uh, the first one from Tam- uh, Captain Tim Wagner. Three teenagers were charged with carjacking. They tried to carjack a man who was in quick check and knocked him to the ground. These kids are young. you know. They're, uh, one was 15, the other was... Uh, 13 and the other, I can't even see what it is. It's too small. But they're all young in the early uh, portion of their teenage years. And uh, fortunately, all three of them were caught, and all three of them are in a juvenile detention facility now. But uh, just a wacky, wacky situation there. And then there's another one where this guy claimed his mother's BMW was stolen. It wasn't. And all the while, he was effing with the police officers so that he could film the ins- the interactions with the cops who were sent for YouTube purposes. So this guy's mother's car was never stolen, but because the Carney police are very smart and much smarter than the average criminal, they were able to figure this out very, very quickly, and this guy was arrested, and... Uh, it's, I just can't imagine calling up the police department and filing a report for a stolen car that was not really stolen just so that you could get YouTube content. I mean, that's just as ridiculous as it gets. So fortunately for this guy, who, by the way, was here on a passport, not a visa, nothing, not working papers, here on a passport, is behind bars. Good job there. KPD. East Newark, the old BASF property, (coughs) pardon me, is going to be renewed into a park, and we have the details of that. Highly contaminated, highly contaminated spot, but they're going to fix it up, 
they uh, were required to do so. And it's just not going to cost the taxpayer anything, and it's going to be a great project and a nice addition to the Passaic Avenue corridor right along the Passaic River. Nutley has unveiled what they are calling an area of hope. It was prompted by, of course, the terrible pandemic of the last two years plus, and it's a place for people to go to reflect, to pray, to meditate in silence and quiet. And Commissioner Moro Tucci was responsible for this project. They unveiled it. And there's a memorial as well to uh, all the people who lost their lives to COVID-19. And a special bench dedicated in the honor uh, in memory of Dr. Michael Giulietto, who we knew here at The Observer, who was one of the first victims of COVID because he didn't care. Uh, he wanted to help patients who had COVID, and he knew he was putting himself at risk. He ultimately lost his life, but he paid the ultimate price. But he was a true hero because he put everybody else's needs before his own. When you get to page seven, you're going to see a picture of Elmo sitting in the council chambers at the Belleville Town Hall. Nobody knows how he got there. Nobody knows who's inside the costume. Nobody knows who paid for the guy to be there. But Elmo showed up to the last meeting, and before that, the last two meetings before this previous one, a clown showed up at the Belleville Township Council meeting. I'm not sure if there's a hidden message or what it is. We don't know who's going to show up next week. Kermit, maybe, Big Bird, who knows. But I saw this picture. When I got it at first, I thought, man, somebody's very, very good at Photoshop. But I spoke to the mayor, and it wasn't a Photoshop job. Elmo was actually in the house. So check that out when you get a chance on page number seven. Jason Bernstein has sports this week. There's a couple of pieces, including one about a former coach from Harrison High School who just landed a gig and in a defensive role with the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. And there's also a recap of Lynnhurst High School's baseball camp that Coach Pat Otiri, the brother of our dear friend Vinny Otiri, puts together each and every year. So check that out when you get a chance. Two pages of classifieds this week. So if you're looking for a place to live, if you need a job, there's a whole bunch of jobs, including for the town of Kearney. So if you're qualified, you should definitely apply because they're very well-paying jobs. There's four in this week's edition of The Observer. Check those out when you get a chance. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of The Observer Live. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me in dealing with my inability to speak today. We will be back one week from today, barring any breaking news during the course of the week. And if something like that does happen, we'll come to you live. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you one week from tonight right here on Facebook or YouTube or whatever it is you're watching. So from the newsroom of The Observer and TheObserver.com, it's Kevin Canessa signing off, and we hope to see you back here again very soon. Bye-bye.